Hi, good morning. This is Take Two. This is Mia. I don't know why the machine turned off. Um, I touched it. I was trying to get these earrings to show you. I keep showing you guys the same things over and over because I have different um, videos that don't necessarily get posted. I don't like touching these. I didn't sanitize these yet. So I got to sanitize these earrings. Wait, it's like a pattern. What is that made out of? I don't know what that's made out of. Oh, I have an alcohol wipe here. I just got to get a lighter to like burn off. These are used. I showed you guys this. Uh, um, I don't know what's this tape doing on here. From the Goodwill. I showed you guys, I think, all this stuff that's kind of. I'm a germaphobe. I'm like, why do I keep doing this? So I invest my money and jewelry so that I can go out to the world with stuff that's as pure as I can find or afford, which I can't afford anything so I use credit. But uh, you see I have only two out of three earrings on that side, only one out of two on that side, and I need to um, keep those holes open it's too many times when I was homeless I didn't have any earrings and then if I find a pair somewhere go to Walmart and get a pair of sterling because I get a really bad allergies to nickel it can't just be sterling it has to be um, interesting it has to be sterling without nickel and the I think the last time what did I buy a set of earrings from Walmart that was in a pack because you could never find anything, anybody at the jewelry counter to open up the, unlock the actual sterling. I mean, even if it's only $5, still locked up. But the cheap stuff on the edge that you can handle. I think I bought a pack for me and my daughter. It said uh, hypoallergenic. I don't know if it was hypoallergenic or not, depending on what you're allergic to. <laughs> but it definitely wasn't um, any kind of precious metal. That was... Uh, I was trying to do this thing where I was using the earrings and then writing our initials on the pack and putting them back in the pack. I don't know. But I didn't have, like, people, I see people with, like, jewelry stands that have spots for earrings and necklaces and bracelets and maybe watches or whatever. I don't have anything like that, which is interesting, um, considering, like, I don't know. I need to be organized, guys, so... Jay's video, I wanted to make a video. I have a really busy day. It's almost 7.30. I don't know how much time I have. I'm pretty anxious right now. I've been extremely exhausted. I've been extremely tired, exhausted. Got my teeth cleaned again. Can you tell? I have um, had to pay a lot of money. And I have had a toothache, so they did um, x-rays here. And then they came back later and did x-rays here. Then they just did, like, my whole mouth. I'm like, oh, my God. every Like, I complain about this. And uh, now I feel ridiculous about having to pay extra. And how have to have the doctor do the exam, which is okay. Um, hold on just a second. Let me, I got to check something. All right. I hope you can hear me. Let's make sure that, yeah, it's not plugged into the earbuds. So, I have written on my Facebook page to vote, and I talked about Eastern Maryland, how I've been treated really badly by some election slash poll workers, and, um, and harassed in the parking lot, and I said I was still going to vote, just by not feeling safe, um, which sucks. Uh, someone should feel safe, you know? I went into a field where I was supposed to help people and I was treated so poorly in the medical field that I pushed myself, got into half a million dollars of debt and have like one patient, like two, two patients, maybe three, um, that's like sad. You gotta have like, normal people have two, three patients at least in an hour every day, five days a week, <laughs> like, uh, even if you only work three days a week, you got some people coming in, and you're going, 
to deliver babies and stuff. So I wanted to talk some about mental health. And I was noticing this huge gap. I noticed this before between my first toe and my second toe. And I looked this up before about people that had Down syndrome. But the gap was like, the other day I was looking at my foot. It's not, it doesn't look as much now. But when I had my foot flat on the ground, it was like a huge gap. Like, how am I supposed to fit my foot into a shoe like that? And I was reading about Down syndrome again. <laughs> it seemed like second and third toes webbed and I'm like mine have been webbed my whole life my second and third toe and I I have like webbing like see my fingers they kind of look longish and then you go like this and there's webbing here there's not much here there's a little bit but here What in the heck? My mother is not here for me to ask. Even if she was, I probably wouldn't talk to her. It's like my dad's not talking to me because I'm apparently the devil. Because I went to multiple births in a row. Um, that's my career, guys. It'd be like if I was in a, a firefighter or something. I had to go out of town, out of state to go fight some forest fire somewhere. Like, hey, I'm not able to just get on the phone and talk to you. Like, who does that? Like, God, I mean, when you're, a, when you're a single mom, you gotta check in with your kids. You know, you have to. Like, and I, I wasn't even doing births when my kids were young, and I, I'm mad about it. But I know that I didn't have a babysitter, so it wasn't worth losing my kids over uh, unpaid. I think, I personally think, I don't know if this how this would look on taxes or if it would look, look like a payment or something you don't want to have employees under you but I personally think that there should be some kind of food card fast food card and gas card should be alternated from your preceptor when you're driving all over multiple states to go deliver babies and go there before the preceptor and come back and forth driving all over town picking up meds with your own gas money like I mean do if I'm a preceptor, while well, I say, hey, to my student, I'm going to buy you food and then not buy the food. I don't know. I think even if it's like, hey, I'm not going to do this often, but here's $15 gas card, like twice a year. Like, I feel like any penny, the struggle is real. The struggle is real. You've got kids, you got daycare, you got to eat. You don't know if you're going to three births in a row in 72 to plus hours, you gotta bring your clothes, you gotta pack anything, if you didn't bring food, you're pretty much starving, you got beverages, all that stuff, you gotta pay for, go into debt for, Zuki, if you wanna see the, what's at the end of the rainbow, the treasure of getting the degree and the certification, you gotta go through this stuff, it's like, God, it makes it feel like I should have gone into the military and done boot camp and at least I would have got paid something, right? You don't do that for free, right? But <laughs> I dropped out of the R Air Force ROTC. I was going to be an astronaut and a doctor. Why is this lady laughing at her tan line? I don't get why that's funny. Like, I was like, I have a tan line from my watch. Like, why is that? I met, haven't even been wearing my watch because my I usually wear. I usually go through more than one watch. And I, uh, I think there's only one. Oh, there's one, and plus a man size one that works that I got stuck on my arm. And in the middle of the night, tried to take it off, and I had a panic attack. Came out here, turned the light on, got online. Let's try to find out how to remove this one. It was on too lately, early in the day, and actually went out. So I'm glad I didn't lose it. I got a jar of vintage watches a few years ago. But the, keeping the batteries, and then I got a solar watch that I paid for. Keeping the batteries and the 
bands on. This has been a nightmare for me. That's why I thought the solar watch would work. But the vegan leather um, strap thingy, watch band, nightmare. So, sickening. Oh, I have a watch that's on a, um, that's a heart. I need to get that one out because I paid good money for the batteries. There's no sense in wasting that. All right, so I have people contacting me too much. I had some potential patients that tried to schedule with me first thing yesterday and today. Like, they weren't able to see the whole schedule. Now they were able to schedule on my state specific and appointment type specific, and they're not responding to me. So I, I was doing, uh, like Saturday mornings, I'm always busy. So I don't have spots on Saturdays at all, unless they're, uh, especially during the time I have meetings. But in, I, uh, especially when I have um, people that want to see me in person, the place I go to in person is not open on Saturdays or Sundays. Like I could do a house call for certain people that are established or uh, telemedicine if it's more urgent for established patients. But I had really bad luck with new patients on Saturday. It was a nightmare. I didn't get paid. It was just people ripped me off, refused to pay. Absolute nightmare. Abs and it was such a nightmare with the attitude. And I, uh, I was not doing the billing or emphasizing. I was emphasizing they pay their co-pays which they were supposed to do during the appointment and I'm not like gatekeeping their treatment plans but then they're they're not they're not seeing their treatment plans they're not getting them out of the portal they're not uh, ordering the supplements I told them to and they're not doing the labs I told them to and then they're telling me that I'm not doing my work and I deserve not to get paid you decided not to follow the treatment plan and complain about going to other doctors now who does that isn't the point, like, what I say during the appointment to everybody is, I want to continue your treatment plan. I'm also going to look at any information you give me afterwards that's from your other doctor, from labs, um, and then de delve into the medication slash, like, drug, 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 herb, drug supplement, potential interactions. And I will tell you certain things on an appointment because it's on the top of my hand, and I'll write down several more things. But until I double check some things or um, some people say, oh, I use such and such. Like for me, I said, oh, I use uh, Epsom salt baths a few years ago and I was getting severe pain during the bath. Like, so I would go back, double check through their intake forms and their first visit forms. Like, oh, OK, did they say, did I ask them if they use this? And I don't remember if they said, yeah, or they may have written this down prior to the appointment, let me double check it, because it becomes a lot of information, but yeah, people that don't follow the treatment plan are people that I say, hey, I'm going to be out of town, and I have three more people to finish some stuff up before you, it's going to be four days, and they're contacting me every day, uh, contact me on day like five or six, like if you don't see anything, or if I don't update you, like hey, you're next in line, I got to go through the labs, speaking of labs, my lab core account got blocked. I used to be able to look up everything, um, but just the lab test and what they had. So if I wanted to look up the CBC versus the CBC with diff, I can look all that up, make sure I have the right code number so I can manually handwrite it on a piece of paper and then transfer, transpose that onto my HR as a generic lab order, entering in all the test codes, entering in whether it's fasting and entering in all the um, information about my clinic, I will tell you, I've seen people say, hey, I can go through LabCorp link or ProLink, and I can enter in tests. Like, I don't have the authority. I called my rep, what, two years ago. They said, you don't make us enough money to hook you up with your EHR. And then I called them the other day and was like, look, such and such and such and such. I can't enter this. I can't enter that. And he's like, oh, you should be able to do it to your EHR. I said, mine's been pending for over nine years. And they're like, though, that's before he said, I said it was pending. He goes, too bad. I'm not going to hook you up. 
with the EHR. We're not going to approve your account. But now he's saying I can order it and that I'm not at a place where the results will be generated back into the EHR. So I'd have to manually enter in every lab result. So see what I mean there? So I want to do really well at what I can do. And was it about two weeks ago I was entering LabCorp link looking at some stuff and then I go back through my laptop and type in LabCorp and it just was like 404 not found or error page. I'm like, is their system down? But then I tried it for like a few more days. I couldn't even enter at all. My rep said I was on a guest account and a guest account is not allowed to look at anything. I was allowed to look at a Medicare, if someone was on Medicare, what the out-of-pocket cost would be or whether it was covered. Um, which mine wouldn't necessarily be covered because I'm not um, a Medicare provider. There's another natural path that is, but it's like $1,000 to even do the application. To do the application to even have a Medicare number. Like, I, I don't even qualify, but I, I need to find out more. I'm going to look I'm gonna look that up and find out who that is. So I want to talk a bit about neurodivergence and my situation, I just sent some something on Facebook to a complete stranger that's some kind of testing and then they want to drop out of school. They don't want to go through their professional career. Like, I'm just like, please do not drop out. I, I don't like telling people what to do, but I'm like, in my mind, I told myself, don't drop out. That's your goal. If you get kicked out because you didn't do something or you failed something or whatever, you couldn't pay all the money that everyone pays for their fancy computers that actually work. So you couldn't get, I almost couldn't get my um, cardiology and pulmonary medicine. And thank God I sent to my tutor the a copy, an old version of the rough draft. I met, I lost a lot of pages, maybe 10 pages, but I, it was, when I turned it in, it was a 20 or 30 something pages report. Um, thank God. Uh, uh, and it's, I had a lot of issues. I had a lot of issues in class in my grades because of my computer, uh, bio, Sony bio. Before that, the Toshiba, everyone else pretty much had a um, MacBook Pro. No problems. I wanted to not print my notes. But my computer kept crashing. Sometimes I'd sit through the whole class, even when I try to type into my notes on the uh, space for notes in the PowerPoint presentations and my own separate page. Sometimes my computer wouldn't even start like the class one or two hours. I couldn't even get my computer to, to actually open up so I can do anything. So then I have always had to bring scrap paper to class with me and the notes if, if I had any before I was just bringing the notes like I can't carry around notebooks full of paper. I got an iPad and then that filled up. I was like, oh, yeah, this is the ticket. This is working. And then you run out of space because someone's like, oh, you got to take your iPad home every night and remove the files off that you're not using. But it's like, it's a full 12 week term. I wanted the notes from the classroom week one all the way on so that I could study. But apparently, I needed either bigger uh, memory space or whatever. So I talked to you guys about, um, I'll just show you. let me show you this picture. This is funny. This is me when I first met my boyfriend. I was way thinner and younger. Look how young I look compared to now. Like, oh my God, I aged in five years. I used this picture of me at the Neon, I think it's at the Neon Museum, a selfie I took in Las Vegas. This is for the Maryland Response Corps. I was like, I'm sitting in this picture. I look normal, like my normal self. I hardly in my life look normal like that was the 2019, 2018 and 2019 were huge years for me to have self-care, like, and self-love, or just the starts of self-life. I spent all my life with people telling me that I don't deserve anything, I don't earn, if I earn an A in the class, they're going to try to give me a D minus or an F, so I had to retake the class. Earning things, like, you go to work, you earn things. How many times I work at NCNN, and they didn't, they refused to give me my paycheck. I hate this world. So I put on this person's thing, um, and then I put on my own post, tip merge, just general, about being treated poorly by the election slash poll workers and or um, people in the parking lot. 
but I'm still gonna vote. I'm like, go out and vote. I'm still gonna vote. So, I hate this world. I went into a career to help people all ages, non-discrimination, whether it's your sexual orientation, what is your gender, whether it's your demographic, whether you're single mom. I got treated poor as a poor black single mom. I have been married to my kids' dad for 10 years. I fled due to domestic violence and was homeless in a homeless shelter. I was paying cash for my house that I bought in West Virginia. I was paying, me and my dad were paying for the apartment in Portland, Oregon. Well, this bozo went out and partied and hung out with strippers and people that he was having relations with outside of marriage. With me having had birth two children 18 months apart after having been homeless with this idiot when my housing kicked me out when I went to one of my mom. My mom had two funerals. I went to Ohio and I went to Oscoda for the funeral. Absolute nightmare. To be treated that poorly. And all the medical errors and just abuse and all that. From the medical system, from community, from social workers, from DHS, the Department of Human Services workers. So I want to talk about my mother telling me when I was in high school that I was told, that she was told that I need to be put into special, edu special education courses. She refused. She told me that. And what's interesting is in Richardson Junior High, or Richardson Middle School, what's it called? Not Middle School. River Road Elementary School, sorry. River Road Elementary School in Osco, New Michigan. I used to play with uh, kids from special education that had visible, they had, um, uh, intellectual or you know or other mental disorders that like, you could see the handicap on their face for whatever reason whatever diagnosis they had I don't know I used to play with those kids on recess when I was really young and then I started getting clicky with some of the girls and hanging out with I was I had crushes on boys and didn't like me back they still don't like me but I had tomboying being a tomboy was like seemed like the the best way to just hang out with the dudes like I had the biggest crush my heart was like so wanting to be boyfriend girlfriend with these dudes so I started hanging out a different way later on but I was remembering playing with the kids from social ed would be together we play football with them and I don't know what happened in middle school I feel like there wasn't a lot is there even recess in middle school and then high school, they, I feel like they were segregated. I kind of wish they weren't separated. I don't know, talk about someone sitting at the table by themselves with their heads down, like, eating by themselves. Like, that's just, I don't know. They should, like, have ties where people intermingle. That's just me, but hey, it was the, it was the 80s and 90s, so. Um, it is what it is. Like, even sports, even gym class, I don't know. But I... I could relate more with them not having like really geeky, not geeky friends, but a religiously strict family, uh, girls from religiously strict families I hung out with in high school, or people that um, our volleyball coach, Miss Henniker, used to make fun of, so the kids of Polish, I was black, there was my friend who was um, tall and uh, Irish, she did not like us. And, like, my tall Irish friend is like, hello, it's volleyball. All she has to do, she barely has to lift her hands, and she's blocking every freaking ball coming over that dang net, and you're gonna, like, you're an idiot. Like, just because you hate them because they're Irish or because they're Polish or because they're, you're black. <laughs> like, the Polish family came in and talk, gave them a talking to, and they, that person got to play, but I didn't. My other friend got cut. It sucked. But... They should be able to not have to deal with segregation and poor treatment. It just drives me really crazy. Or like finances. If they only accepted people in the junior team if they went to, or junior varsity, not junior varsity. The first year varsity team, if we went to camp in the summer, we only got selected. So they cut everyone who didn't go to camp. But that's a finance. My parents had money to send me, and they decided to send me. So. Anyways, thinking of 
struggling with a lot of stuff, being told by someone who's now a doctor in uh, psychiatry, I think. <laughs> this tutor that was a TA was like, you have dyslexia. Like before, when we were all still in undergrad, she was like, you have dyslexia. Like, she's like, I have dyslexia, you have dyslexia. Like, have you not been diagnosed with that? It's the way, it's not just the way that I was reading things, it's the way I was thinking about things and the questions I was asking. She could see right through it. So I never got diagnosed with that. I'm also left-handed, which screwed me the heck up. Geometry was hard for me because of the spatialness, the spatial awareness on paper throws me off. Like, if I pick up this phone and I can, say, measure this corner to this corner, or like, if you talk about width, depth, and length, like, the, my mind just goes in a and I have an online store, so I'm always measuring that stuff for the uh, packaging so that I can enter and get uh, pay the right amount of money. So I have under, the only thing, I have all these diagnoses, non-diagnoses, and the only thing I'm being treated for is the nightmares for PTSD. And I want alternative health care or integrative health care acupuncture, massage, I want to release toxins. So I'm, anything that I'm doing for ADHD, PTSD, like regular PTSD, not just the nightmares, for um, severe depression, for potential autism spectrum disorder, for um, <laughs> these try dyslexia. I have had to come up with my own accommodations. I have had to come up with my own ways of studying. I've had to come up with my own ways of coping, which used to include drinking and substance use. So I was using just over the counters until I found somebody with some cannabis. Um, I have a uh, criminal record for uh, put, uh, attempted possession of a cannabis and uh, some kind of a pipe, which any pipe could be used for tobacco, but they counted it as a, a controlled substance. So I have every time I get a medical license, DEA license, any kind of job, certain jobs, some of them don't go back now as from the, you know, the time back in 1990 something. I don't know what happened because it was so long ago. It was 30 years ago, 20 something, 30, like guys, come on. So Illinois has a expungement, but I still need to admit to this. I got myself clean and sober. People used cannabis medicinally prescribed by the doctor. People use CBD. People use um, psychedelics to help with the severe depression and other things. Uh, psychedelic treatments. They met Johns Hopkins, and um, I can I can do certain uh, medications in my Portland clinic. So when I go back, I will be uh, looking into helping me. This is it's a living hell to be in your mind and not have anybody talk to you. Your therapist, your counselor, my habit therapist doing EMDR, but we're not talking about general stuff. But that's freaking me out. And the time to do the EMDR, they're not doing a whole hour appointment, so it's uh, at the most 15 minutes. So there's not time to be like, hey, I had a bad day yesterday, and I, this is how I coped, or I need help coping, or I need to help be accountable to something. There's not been time for that, really. There's a couple meet and greet sessions so that we, I can feel calm enough to do the EMDR with the stranger and have my eyes closed and I'll bring in out the vision of my mom whooping me. Um, so at night when I was in 6th, 7th, 8th grade and whatever else, um, she would spank me all the time, but when I talk about whipping me with the belt, it was a nightly thing. There wasn't like some kind of punishment like you didn't eat your dinner or whatever. It was like straight abuse, threatening, beating with the hands, slapping on the face, threatening to kill me. My mother did this. Everyone thinks that she's the saint. She was an evil person towards me. Absolute monster. And I had other issues with family members that I don't feel like discussing right now. But you already heard. That's why I found finally put a disclaimer on the video. So how do I cope and how do I get through my life? I went to dentist and then what, so two days prior to that I went to the EMDR. I was exhausted since the EMDR since so traveling on the airplane. I got my nifty 
Costco did a class of 94 t-shirt on. I have some friends that everyone got quiet on Facebook, so that's kind of sad. Everyone was all like friend request, friend accept, all this stuff. And so it's been sad, you know. I posted pictures for the first time. I have somebody, um, I had traumatic brain injury when I got in a car accident in 2014. <laughs> I have chronic pain, which distracts me from, distracts me from everything and it makes it hard to sit in the steep. These people over here, one, it's like, they're guarding their thoughts more. But this other lady hates me being with my partner. And every time we interact with this fool, me and my partner get in an argument. And he doesn't understand. He's like, well, just stand up and just be yourself. Don't let these people mess with you. But every single time we have an interaction, we get in an argument for no reason at all. It could be like this pen, a pen could fall on the floor and we could be in an argument for hours. Like, I'm like, do you realize we had that interaction with this witch here? Like, and I have to justify some words that I didn't say or that I didn't want to say or words that, like, this fall down, oh, we argued, oh, my phone rang, oh, my God, we had to argue about it. Like, come on, use that energy to, like, break down boxes, take them out to the recycling and all that. Like, use that energy to do your hair and fold your clothes and change the sheets on the bed, like, wash the dishes, like, there's plenty of energy that needs to be spent, or both of us are exhausted, so, having these disabilities, being almost 48 years old, and having very, very few friends in, in my life, and having a severely abusive mother who faked and act, she didn't always act nice, my friends called her out, uh, for me, like, why is your mom treating you like this? I was a kid, I was a teen, I didn't know, but then I realized, I pieced together how her and my brother would gang up on me and make fun of me all the time. My dad wasn't around. Sometimes my dad stood up for me a little bit, but he was, the apple didn't fall far from the tree with those folks. That's what I would tell you. So there's no family support. And I'm a matriarch, whatever that means, me and my daughter, and we've got to do the household stuff from from my family, like me, her, and her brother, um, then my partner, I don't know, it's like, we're not, like, married or whatever, so it's like, <laughs> I, I always imagine, uh, well, when I was 20-something, my mom died when I was 21, my mom, my mom, my cousin's mom, which is my aunt, died a year or two later, and then my grandma lived a few years, but she ended up in a nursing home, and she wasn't really talking to I was trying to talk to her regularly back when we had to memorize phone numbers. I was trying to talk to her regularly. Guys, I don't remember ever getting advice or having a normal conversation with grandma. I don't remember it whatsoever. If she had a TV turned up loud, maybe she didn't want to talk. But I had been listening to techno, so I was driving around with my techno music blasting out of my Jeep going back and forth to church and to the Burger King, like, for the free senior coffee, that's, I learned that she washed her freaking bags in aluminum foil, that's what I learned from her, you know what I mean, so, I'm trying to think, so, life, on life's terms, having a family that cares, having a healthcare system that doesn't discriminate because you're poor, fat, black, single parent, whatever, divorced, all these things, people are Christians telling me I'm going to hell because I left an abusive and uh, adulterous husband. And then, God help me, if I have another partner and or end up married again, these Christians want to just condemn me to hell. Which, I might end up there, but that's between me and my God, right? Um, judge not, least be judged, but their big book tells them that their Savior went around with compassion. So, why, why can the men have multiple wives with no issues? And then all the story if you read through the Bible, all the stories are prostitution. And Jesus' best friend was pretty much a prostitute. And these guys, some guy left his cane 
at a brothel somewhere in the Bible, like, and he had to go back and get his cane or something. I think he impregnated the uh, prostitute. Like, oh, that's all acceptable. Like, and it is acceptable still today. I see some of the behaviors coming out of the old church I used to go to. I feel like I'm running out of time, so this was kind of a trigger warning. I don't know how to live with these ailments, and except for the fact I've made it this far, and it's tea time, I guess I'm thinking like, I'm still alive, and to be, to walk outside, and to be bullied, and to be harassed, and tripped, and having people throwing three by fours out my head, and having doctors refuse, and having the ignorant workers telling me to go get a colposcopy because I have uh, abdominal issues. I'm like, do you not realize a colposcopy is your cervix? I'm taking a biopsy sample from your cervix, your female part, like, like, you mean colonoscopy? Like, don't tell me what to do. You are not qualified to tell me what, it's like the medical assistant or whatever, whoever cleans the room, I don't know who that was, like, you need to get a colposcopy, and I just, I just lay down, like, either they're messing with me, or they're really ignorant, and I'm just like, it didn't take a doctor, me being a licensed physician, to know that you are telling me some whack, like, I got no more abnormal cells in my service, you need to shut up, like, you <laughs> just, it doesn't take, a, like, I knew what that was before I became a doctor, before I went into medical school. So now I have had surgeries and procedures on my cervix. Like that other doctors get paid $3,000 an hour to push me away from getting... So he's trying to say, you have cervical abnormal cells in your cervix. What's a cervical? What's a leap procedure? Because there's cervix, your cervical vertebrae, and then there's your cervix. Who named those the same thing? And this guy is like 80 years old wrote a report that I was making up all my elements and that was faking injury. And you hear me every day talk about chronic pain, brain injury from automobile accident, all of this crap, not being able to feel my um, appendages, and my jaws all off. The stress of being in chronic pain is horrible. Still where the seatbelt went across my body, bleeding in the bowel, all this stuff is not addressed. And I can't get it just because the car insurance refused to pay because this idiot, uh, independent medical dude, lied on his report. And God help you if you're in med school or if you're a healthcare provider and anybody asks you about any car insurance, try to think that you're making it up. They, they asked me on record, have you ever treated a car accident patient? And I was like, yeah, once, but... Anyone, they don't say that you treated them for a car accident. Did you treat them? This person was like 90 years old and they had a car accident like back in 1930 or 40 when they were a kid. Like, we weren't necessarily treating them for that and it was not an acute injury. <laughs> we were treating them for, but they, that was part of the story because I'm a naturopathic physician and you asked for prior medical history. Bailey medical histories, prior I asked prior diagnosis, and medications, what worked, what didn't work. Sometimes I wish I could, like, snap my fingers. I feel like this neural divergent stuff is really crippling, and I made it this far. It's like I told this other person, you made it to where you made it as a senior in college. Yeah, stuff's getting hard just because you're a senior. You're probably a man of genius. It's probably the system's not set up. And if your uh, demographic is that of not the atyp like normal, typical person who's in uh, higher education, that makes it even like exponentially harder. Not just the subject matter is starting to be challenging, not easy. It could be easy for you if you're neurodivergent, but that the way that they put things towards white male, upper middle class, or upper class, white males, and then adding, like, female stuff. If you're anything not, like, Protestant and uh, white, Anglo-Saxon, um, 
heterosexual, like, it makes it, like, gender, uh, assigned at birth, like, all that stuff, like, gen your gender is still that, that it was assigned, it's like, it wants you're in a system that does not recognize diversity or they recognize it in a punishing way it's exponentially more challenging I'm gonna go study I was studying uh, trying to study a medical uh, flight surgery so flight surgeon tried to work for the government you know and I could be a rocket scientist. I could be all this stuff, and it, the, the actual subject matter, like, oh yeah, I get that. Oh yeah, I get that. Oh yeah, I got, you know, 90 plus percent on all my tests, despite all my, but the, the racism and the sexism and the classism and all that stuff. The stress of it, you go into your class stressed, you go home to study stressed, and you can't get study partners because nobody wants to associate with someone like you, and then you you come back as a um, coming back to class, taking the test stressed out. So instead of getting 100 plus, you're lucky to get that 85, 90 plus with all those stressors going on. It's not, if you take your anatomy or uh, organ systems, your brain does not like to thrive. You get into pretty much in survival mode. So you got, you got disabilities on top of all that stuff. And I'm in recovery. Forty years, clean and sober, guys. July 4, 2024. I only have today. At any time, I can pick up. It's a scary situation, so I want to do. I want to teach people through from my from this chair. Oh, it doesn't have to be this chair, but I, I want to teach from home. I want to buy a waterfront house, a waterfront property, and then with the house, on. so I can. reduce stress of the systemic issues we have when people make fun of people because they're because they're demographic because their skin color because you stutter when you speak sometimes like I made fun of so much I want waterfront property in a clean place that I can swim and take a little boat and do the I've never done paddle boating and like a little canoe like I want to be able to Like drive a truck down to a spot on my near my property and walk up back home, not too far, and then jump in a canoe and canoe down and be able to pick up my. Canoe. And I want to be able to walk and not use fuel as much and be able to still go to the post office and go to those shops and roadside stands or organic food. There's something in the water, something here. There's a lot of cancer here. A lot of people. People talking about like it's normal. Oh, I had this. My partner had this. My uncle, my grandpa, my you know, my mother. Like, I don't know what what it is. I don't know if it's something in the air, the water, just general habits. There's no regular like health food stores. There's a lot of pesticides being sprayed. Because of that, I'm ready to get away from this. The airplanes come right over you and spray. <laughs> And then they do it again. It goes over the highway because you got corn or GMO crops on both sides of the street you're driving down. Try to permanently keep the um, car intake closed for the air intake for the um, the heat in the air conditioner and have it end up shutting windows. It's just like so there's a lot. I see a lot and. I lose weight when I go back to Southwest Portland, not doing anything actual. I get, when I lived on the east side of Portland, I was fatter, and the west side I was skinnier, and I come back here, and my weight balloons up. And then was, when I was in Michigan, up north, I felt pretty good, except for until I went into the chlorinated pool. <laughs> but I, I felt pretty good. I felt awesome for the first time in a long time it was really rushed and really a lot of gratitude and stress dealing with the 
systemic Microsoft outage. Peace, guys. I'm going to get off here before I, like, clam up. Somebody comes in. I'm going to go do my tea, maybe reheat my water. Um, I'm going to ask a question. Oh, please like and subscribe. I'm trying to get to 100 subscribers. Um, I'm going to I'm gonna keep you guys posted for an accountability team. I need to spend less money and... Earn more money and get out of debt. Use that money to get out of debt and pay my pay my bills and get out of debt. What I need to do is sell more stuff. If I need to buy, I tell you guys I need to buy clothes for different reasons, like for, um, because I'm fat. Replace my shorts, replace my skirts, put in my favorite slacks in the for sale pile, crying over it. Replacing my tank tops because I feel like a sausage being stuffed into my clothing. And, and my shirts inch themselves up because of, you know, movement and just because they're too tight. And then everything that I'm buying is too big. Like, this is too big. And I'm like, ugh. So, I pray that I can make my home, whether I was homeless or living in a castle. Like, I can make my home, my queendom, and be my own royalty with, and treat myself with respect. Treat myself with esteem. Treat myself with confidence so I have self confidence, self esteem. And there's a reason that we don't all live in communal housing because you've got people trying to steal your partner, you've got people trying to sabotage you, or poison everyone. You watch real crime, Pe or not everyone, but pe certain people will just be yucky towards another human being only because their own mental issues up here jealousy, envy, all that stuff, lusts. Look at Chris Watts and Cheyenne, um, and the two girls and the boy that, uh, the unborn boy that was killed because he had a affair. Like, idiot, just divorce her and let her be a charming person for somebody else who actually gives a care, you know, for those three kids. There's people out there that will do that. And the woman who dated tried to say, I thought he was already separated from me. You know full well that he was separated from his wife. You know full well that she was still calling and checking in, you know, when she was out of town doing her, um, whatever, selling, marketing, all that, all those retreats she was going on. You know full well. So be careful. If you haven't watched Fatal Attraction. Just remember how people are. People think I'm tripping because this lady hates me. One of these letter carriers was talking to this, these couple gals that were out here. The one was talking and the other one. This guy was heavy set. I see how she acts. She was just like, <sighs> the fit look on her face was like, oh my god, stop talking to us. And then me and my partner, she, she's trying to flirt with him. And she's trying to like destroy me. And if you see these people out there, when some business people that look like they have money walk by, they are extreme and extreme flirt, 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 flirt. I want to control men to do what I want when I want mode, and I'm just like, I'm a geek. I have different socializing skills. These skills cause me to get hurt and to not use people. Try to act nice to use somebody to get a buck, you know. I don't do that. I don't, I don't do that. But I'm at the extreme. So if you guys find people that you can work with, that will work with you, with your career, with your business, if you stay home, if you stay a home parent or a partner, if you're at home with disability, whatever it may be, if you're already retired, if you have a trust fund, if you won the lottery, whatever. If you could find people that you can, like, I'm not normal typical. And I mean, they're really lonely because I didn't have friends. I don't have customers. But I want to say, I want to tell you, hey, let's stick together and hang. Let's hang in there. Peace, guys. It is breakfast time. I have a group at 9, it's 8, 12, and I have class right after that until 5. So I won't even be able to go to the market or anything. But I don't even know if there's a break. But I gotta 
get my stuff ready because they said we have to have the camera on and speak and we if we're gone for more than half an hour we're gonna get kicked out of the class I'm like, good god so i usually check my mail on saturdays before 12 so I'll, the only thing i could do is go check it right now i don't even think they put it in the box at this time but we'll see peace guys